Hi, my name is Winslet, and welcome to my Devar Doctrine tier list. At the beginning of April, I posted my complete Doctrine tier list, which looks like this. And today I'm going to be going into why I placed each of the Devar Doctrines where I did. While I expect that future expansions and patches will change how good some of these doctrines are and add a few others, the doctrines kept the same values that they had at the beginning of the game, at the launch of the game, up until the Tyrannosaurus patch, so for about nine months. Um, and I expect that these numbers will stay the same for a while now. Even if they do change, I think that these tier lists will remain useful, especially to new players who just kind of want to get an idea of, of which doctrines are, are good doctrines and um, why certain doctrines are bad doctrines, and uh, at what point in the game do certain doctrines become better, and, and why they become better. Um, there are 97 doctrines that I could find in the game, and while I would love to talk about them all in one video, I decided to break them into smaller, more digestible segments like this video. Alright, so we're going to start off in the A tier with revised safety regulations, which is a doctrine I'm sure other people would have put much further down in A tier list, but I'm a big fan of strategies that take a little bit of time to implement. I don't like rushing down the opponent and, um, you know, trying to win the game as quickly as possible. I prefer to role play a little bit, see what the map has to offer, and um, yeah, just play around with it. But I do know that other people think that that this doesn't give you enough as quickly as other doctrines and therefore you should just pass up up on it entirely if you combine this with the builder doctrine you can get a massive reduction in the amount of production it takes to make your building so you can build up really really strong defenses very very quickly and um, I think that's pretty valuable a lot of the other buildings that you can make give you passive bonuses that build up over time so if you go for buildings this becomes incredibly powerful in the late game and it's it's kind of fun at that point to just kind of stomp around the map at least in my opinion that's a more fun way to play um, but to actually look at the numbers that are associated with revised sa safety regulations we're going to need to jump on into the game and pull it up in the imperial archives imperial archives oh wait no why am i typing that we want to type revised safety regulations and so yeah this costs us 50 energy six tactical operations points to reduce um, the amount of production it takes to make any of the buildings in our in our city so yeah it's really nice i think that applies to your exploits as well so you can just power through those those things that you really do need in the mid game so I think it is valuable if, if you're not going for like some kind of rush, rushing strategy. Now, I think we can compare this to the doctrines that are around it. If we go back to the complete tier list, we can see that this is next to the builder uh, doctrine and next to, ooh, which one is that? It's a Promethean one. I'm going to have to look up the name of that one because I don't remember off the top of my head what that doctrine does. Um, but yeah, the, the builder one is, is quite nice. It uh, allows you to reduce your production by 20% as well, and I think it costs pretty much the same amount. Let's pull up those numbers so that we can start talking about them now. If we go here and we go builder, The builder costs the same. It costs 50 energy and six tactical operations points. It's pretty much the same doctrine, but you have to go through a couple steps in order to unlock it. You have to um, add a sector to your capital, capital, exploit that sector, and then found a second colony. I think that takes a little bit longer than researching your first tech, which, uh, yeah. You can, you can do pretty quickly. I'm on turn two here, 
and we have uh, three turns until we can get that. So five turns seems pretty reasonable if you ask me. All right, so I found it. Phoenix Defense Protocols. It's yeah, it's just a nice doctrine. It gives you a little bit of extra armor and some operational defense, which is pretty special. There aren't a lot of things that give you operational defense. There's some technologies that do it, a handful of doctrines that do that. And the fact that you get that with something else is very, very nice. If you're you're playing something that's already armor heavy, it's less valuable to you um, because maybe your opponent has psychic damage, which just bypasses armor. But if you're playing somebody who's shield heavy, maybe like Kirko or the Syndicate, um, that's a nice doctrine for you. And you can play you know, Kirko, Promethean. That's an option. So I I like it a lot. I could see um, the the VAR doctrine revised safety protocols being more valuable to certain empires than this one. But I think they're they're competitive. There's a reason that they're they're right next to each other on the tier list. So let's jump on back over to our our. Uh, Devar tier list to see what's next. We have fortification efforts. We can go back in game now and look that up. Fortification efforts. Now this one I do like quite a bit. It gives you plus 10 um, HP on your your colony militias and turrets. Um, no wait, the colony militias have plus 10 HP, the turrets have plus 3 armor, so yeah, I thought at first that that applied to both the colony militias and the turrets, they get both of those benefits, but no, it only only one of those applies to one and the other one applies to the other. Uh, and this makes it so that it's easier to build those defense structures, which I'm a big fan of, I like those a lot, I know other people don't think it's worth the upkeep, but if you've got this doctrine, it makes it so that the upkeep is nothing. So you might as well get it, right? Production's cheaper, upkeep's nothing. I think that makes sense to me. It's only 100 energy. You, you're going to get a lot of value out of those defensive structures if you if you play your cards right. The AI loves to attack <laughs> your your capital with turrets. So, you know, you can use that to to really um, pull their feet, their, their, uh, armies apart so yeah there's the reason i guess this one's like further down than the the promethean thing that gives you um you know a little bit more defenses in your in your territory is because the other one gives you that operational defense very very special now what do we have on either side of fortification efforts we'll have to check my complete tier list to see it has indentured servitude, I believe, on the left, and hives embrace on the right. So that's that's let's look those up really quickly. So indentured servitude, yeah, I got it right. Will give you minus eight happiness, but increase your production by forty percent. Production's great. It allows you to build units or buildings. Having plus forty percent is worth it even in your smaller colonies i know that minus eight is a pretty big deal but with the changes to happiness i think you should be able to manage it there could be more changes in the future that makes this a lot worse um the penalty of minus eight or maybe they'll, they'll up the number to a bigger number but at this point i like it i like it quite a bit i think it's just a little bit better than um fortification efforts because it can allow you to build units to go on the offense that's something that you should not be understated plus 40 percent production will allow you to build a lot like bigger units a lot more often i know the smaller tier units it takes like a turn or two to build a unit but tier three or four it can take a while especially if you haven't specialized in production and i would recommend you do if you're going to take you know indentured servitude now the thing that was off to the right was hives embrace and I like this one. I like this one a lot. It gives you influence and uh, for each non kirko colony that you own, which isn't that hard to get. I mean, you won't have that at the beginning of the game, but if you're 
shooting for this as a goal, you should be able to get yourself a lot of non Kirko colonies. Um, but it's not just that. It gives you happiness. Uh, it makes your happiness events twice as good. So it's pretty awesome. Um, slightly worse than uh, fortification efforts. Fortification efforts is pretty good. Being able to have no no upkeep on your, your defensive things is, I think, incredibly valuable and uh, not to be overlooked. All right, so the next thing on our list is Native Displacement Act. So Native Displacement Act, it is one I highly recommend, but that's because I don't usually attack NPC factions. I usually negotiate with them. So um, having a reduction of 30% and what I need to pay to get them to leave a location is a big advantage for people who like to play that way. Um, but I don't know. If you don't, this is useless. This is completely useless. By itself, it's pretty awesome, though. I, I, like Even if you're just going to remove some of the independent armies at the beginning of the game and then attack them later, you may want to pick this up to make it easier to, to buy them off of the locations. Because um, like some of the rewards are pretty good. If you don't have to fight every fight for those rewards, I think you'll get more out of your, your armies. If you can spread them all across the map and buy lots of things, yeah. That's really nice. Okay, so what is native displacement next to? So let's go back here and we'll see that it's right after Hives Embrace, which we've already talked about. I like it a lot. It's pretty valuable. Um, but it's only a little bit better than native displacement. It's not like a lot better than it, honestly. It's hard to make that that one work. Both of these doctrines, both Highs Embrace and Native Displacement Act, need a little bit of synergy to make it work well. Uh, so yeah, I think it makes sense that they're next to each other in the tier list. And then we have Karmaic Amplification off to the right, which I will pull up now. Got to make sure we show what I'm seeing in game. There we go. Karmaic. Amplification, which makes it easier to get quests. I love that. I love the ability to get more quests quicker because questing gives you rewards and allows you to put experience on your armies. And if you're lucky enough not to lose any units, like that's generally always a good idea. I mean, I guess you could be in a war and you might need to send your units elsewhere, but um, I, I think that's an awesome advantage. And then there's more to it. The factions, the NPC factions are are going to demand um, things from you less often so you know you don't have to give them your energy and cosmite you get to use that on building units or modding units and that's that's pretty awesome it's pretty cheap only 50 energy but I think potentially you can get more out of uh, native displacement acts at least in the early game you you probably would drop native displacement acts after a certain amount of time whereas karmic amplification i feel like is something that you would run pretty much until well not the end of the game but the mid game you wouldn't want to take this off until like you're entering the late game i think and then you're like oh i'm no request i don't need that anymore i can i can meet faction demands whatever give me another doctrine so what's next we have uh, Cosmite collection programs. So that's over in B tier. Let's go pull that up in game. Cosmite collection program, which gives you plus 20% Cosmite from all of your, your Cosmite uh, nodes, I guess. I think maybe that is only to the things that aren't in your city. Actually, yeah, that's that's what it's talking about. Uh, excuse me while I use some cheats to see the world. I think it's talking about these. These are Cosmite nodes, right? I think that's what it means. It If you're generating Cosmite at home, it's not going to give you plus 20%. Are you Cosmite node? 
yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I don't really use Devar very often, and uh, while I could see there being some value in having lots and lots and lots of um, Cosmite, I don't think I mod as much as other people, and therefore I don't run out of Cosmite. So it's not as valuable to me as maybe other players. Now, what do we have next to the Cosmite collection programs? We have the Xenoplague, Bio, uh, something or other, um, and we have Unification, something over here on the left. So let's try and find those in game. So we got Unified thingy. Not that one. This one. So this gives you. Um, more relations gain or favor for completing quests and you get a hundred influence. I love playing peacefully so this is something that I may value, uh, I may overvalue because you know a hundred points on your reputation is pretty minor but getting that extra favor means that you can buy better units more more quickly and um, also uh, it annex the uh, those bigger locations that give you like cosmite and stuff if you do that like these yeah the dwellings that's what they're called the, the word escaped me it's it's worth getting the the relationship favor up for those reasons oh and when you do you get more influence when you have more favor with a thing they give you more influence so um it's pretty good i like that one now can i find the xenoplague thing i think that's what i'm looking for yeah, so this just makes it so that you get uh, a higher chance of spawning or evolving units um, at the end of each battle. I think it takes the value that you were going to get and multiplies that by 30, and then they keep track of that towards a, a threshold. And once you cross a threshold, you either spawn a unit or evolve a unit, depending on, I guess, how many points you earned. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not terribly experienced with the Xenoplague, but I've heard some people talking about this one, and they like it. They seem to like it a bit, but I feel like Cosmite is more valuable. I think it could be more valuable than this, potentially. So, what do we have next? Let's hop on back to not that one, this one. The Curocracy? I'm not sure how to say that. So, that one is... Another fun one. I think this one is this one that involves happiness. Yeah. So it gives you extra energy at the cost of happiness. That's a pretty big um, penalty on your happiness, and you're spending energy to gain energy. I guess it could be great if you're in the late game, but if you're in the late game, do you really want to spend that much energy on a on a doctrine that's only going to get you a little bit of energy? It doesn't seem that great. I could see it potentially being okay if you get it early enough, but something about those numbers just don't seem to be adding up uh, in your favor. Um, maybe if this cost half as much energy or if it gave you plus four for each colonist, then I'd be like, whoa, okay, that's worth considering. But at that point in the game, you probably have enough energy income. If you've got 200 energy, you've probably got enough energy income. Um, but hey, what do I know? Maybe it's better than, uh, you know, I'm giving it credit for. Now, what's next to it? Let's just pull up our complete tier list to check. Uh, can we even see it? I think it has been covered. Let me just go over to another thing. Oh, it hasn't been covered, no. Uh, it was over there, I'm just blind. <laughs> so we got Connected Society off to the left of it, and it looks like an Empire Quest over to the other side. Okay, I can find uh, Connected Society really quickly. Right, so this one is going to give you research um, for each colonist, instead of the, the plus two energy, you get plus one uh, research, at, but you have to give in. Uh, you have to, your colonies uh, um, are all going to suffer four happiness or minus four 
happiness, which means that the penalty is less, but the benefit is less. I mean, you get it earlier in the game, so that all checks out to me. But I like it better because I feel like research will do you more good in, well, in the long run than having a little bit more energy. By spending a little bit of energy to get research, you pro you, that sounds like you're doing what could be a, a beneficial transfer of resources. Uh, maybe you don't have an easy way to generate research. Um, I mean, you almost always want energy, so you may have, have just gone for energy production, and now you can spend that energy and, and turn it into a little bit of research to help you catch up with that. But uh, I think the real deciding factor that put it ahead of uh, the Devar thingy, it was the fact that it just doesn't hurt your happiness nearly as much. Happiness is pretty awesome. And what was the doctrine? It was like the hand with an open palm, something facing above it. Let's check what that is over here. That is patron. I think I like patron. So yeah, patron gives you um, 300 morale. Um, your NPC units gives them plus 10 HP and plus 10% extra damage, which is really, really good if you have a lot of NPC faction units. And uh, you may have none by itself. This could be pretty useful, but you definitely need to combine it with a decent number of NPC units to get any value out of it. And um, that, if you did that, it would put it ahead of the last two doctrines we talked about. But I think with the way most people play, this isn't that valuable. But if you play like me, it's pretty good. You may want to put it a little bit higher up in the list. It's definitely something that should be marked as a plus one with synergy. It is, right? Yes, it's marked with plus one with synergy. It's probably plus two with synergy. With enough synergy, it might even take it up to S tier. Um, so yeah, let's talk about our last doctrine. I believe it's the last one. Let's just bring this up here. Yes, military industrial complex. So let's see what that is. That is, I can't remember actually what it does at all. Oh, rushing units is cheaper. In addition, the upkeep of heavy units is reduced by 35%. I guess that could be really, really good if you have a lot of like tier 3 or tier 4 heavy units. Uh, but if you're at that point, do you really want to spend 200 energy reducing your upkeep on them? You may just want to spend that 200 energy on building more units. You probably have a, a lot of units if you're at tier 9 technology. Um, or you probably have a lot of production, energy production, if you're at tier 9 technology, but maybe you just focus down your tech tree and you don't have the energy. I guess this could this could work out in your favor, but you're, you're going to have to invest a lot in the synergy for it to have any value. Rushing units, I don't know. I wouldn't do that unless you really, really needed to. And if you really need to, are you going to have... 200 energy to spare to get that going probably not so they're, they're, i just i find it hard to believe that this is a good option right one last thing we got to compare this to the other doctrines that are around it so what do we have around it we have Venus in inner communion and then spy master so let's just pull those up in game really really quickly Yep, there we go. That will allow you to carry more essence, and it has the potential for some synergy, but it's it's another one that's not that great. There's a reason they're both in D tier. They're, they're pretty awful. I mean, it's only 50 energy at least, so there's that. You got an extra Doctrine slot. I guess I could see you going for it. And Spy Master. This is good if you want to go for covert operations. It allows you to defend yourself a little bit more and uh, go on the offense with the, those covert operations just a tiny little bit more. But I haven't had a lot of success with, with going down the covert operation path. I think if you're going to do that, you have to invest in it as heavily as possible, get all the doctrines, and um, go for that research like almost exclusively. Just 
doesn't sound like that much fun to me and like you're opening yourself up to all kinds of other issues but hey what do i know i'm not an expert on covert operations um so yeah that's all i wanted to say on today's tier list if you've got any comments make sure you let me know in the comments down below i'll see you around have a good one